Hello everybody, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, good 3am, good 6pm, good whatever the time it is where you are. I hope it's going well. Welcome to a, another Astrobiological Facebook group podcast. My name is Ben and it's uh, good to have you along. This is just a general sort of uh, chat about the group, um, some news and stuff, things I'm doing, things I'm up to. I just uh, like to um, welcome new members, um, talk about some astrobiological stuff, things like that. So without any further ado, uh, let's get going. Let's uh, take a look at the group first, see how the group's going. So let's go to switch windows here on my computer. For a start, we've got some new members. Let's welcome them. Uh, let's welcome uh, Gregory Koshkin, Adesh Gupta, John Patrick Abad Parthan, Sheridan Raves, Robert S. Hughes, Ryan Cornell, and Anya McBumbum. That's a cool name. Thanks for hopping on the uh, Astro Train. So what's been going on the uh, with the Astro Biological Group as of late? I've been pretty busy. Those of you who are on, on a daily basis, I've started doing a series of uh, little daily videos. Little, uh, fact bites or news bite type things. Uh, the first one I believe was about water and meteorites and then I've gone on to uh, a comparison between ancient Mars and ancient Earth. The NASA's new planet hunter, the TESS or Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite which is uh, being trundled into the launch bay right now and will be uh, heading spaceward fairly soon. I believe April of that, maybe possibly could be March. Uh, that's a recent update uh, since yesterday. And today's video was about Enceladus and the discovery by Cassini, when Cassini was still flying the spaceways of molecular hydrogen in plumes erupting from cryovolcanoes or fissures on the surface of this moon of Saturn. And this molecular hydrogen is a strong indicator of the presence of uh, hydrothermal activity or hydrothermal vents somewhere beneath the ice. And that's a promising sign for the, uh, the possible presence of life on Enceladus. It's uh, not a strong indicator, but it's a, it's a pretty, it's a pretty uh, promising uh, clue. So I'm gonna, I have been following that a fair bit. I follow all that kind of stuff. I'm a bit, big fan of the, uh, the watery moons of Saturn and Jupiter. Uh, I love to just. Oh, I hope that one day we uh, do manage to get under the ice and explore. I mean, the oceans are deep. I mean, I, I believe in Europa the ocean is about 62 miles deep. It's, it's got about 10 times the amount of water that Earth has. It's, I guess it's only imagine what's under there. I mean, who knows? Right, so that's those little videos. Hope you're enjoying those. I'll be doing trying to do one each day or at least each weekday. I might leave weekends free. I've been working on my uh, YouTube stuff as well. Uh, the last video was about, oh, excuse me. Last video was about it was about wolf rat stars. Uh, I've been working on it for a while. I've been telling you guys all about it. It's finally up. If you haven't seen it, uh, check it out. It's doing okay. I mean, I'm not. Uh, Vsauce or PewDiePie by any stretch, you know, may never be, but uh, the channel is growing. I'm up to 180 subscribers at the moment, which for me is pretty good because uh, only a few months ago I was around about 100, I think, or just below 100. So it's starting to grow a bit. The rate of growth has started to quicken, I've noticed, and the views are going up. Still not much, but it's, uh, it was a thousand not so long ago, and now it's up to just over 2,600. So somebody's watching, so thankful for that so um, I'm working on fine-tuning the videos I'm gonna probably look into adding captions to as many videos as I can as well I'd like to uh, reboot a few of them sort of um, spiffed them up a little bit uh, that's something I plan to do that'll be a work in progress although I think though if you like any of the videos or anything about the channel uh, let me know because the feedback is good uh, speaking of feedback, um, I don't think I got to speak about my mega structure uh, Facebook live stream a week or so ago. It uh, it was a lot of fun. I 
did a similar thing on Periscope, and I also did a uh, live stream on YouTube, so I'm getting into the live stuff now a bit. Um, it's just a way of getting out there and meeting people, I guess, if you feel absolutely free to hop in and, you know, say howdy, offer suggestions or whatever. I'm always open to suggestions about this stuff. I'm not a media professional, I'm just a guy doing it from the back room of his house um, in his spare time for free with minimal equipment. So, um, you know, I hope it's uh, entertaining someone and, and teaching somebody because that's, uh, that's, that's what I'm all about, really. Um, people tell me I'm entertaining, I like to think I am sometimes. But uh, I've got a lot of ideas in my head, and there's almost not enough room in there anymore. I'm starting to really concentrate on this. The channel and this group a bit. Um, the group's doing pretty well. Let's just see how the group's going. Let's look at the stats for the group. Whoop. Where's my mouse gone? Right, group. Scroll up here. Group insights. Let's take a look. What's happened in the group in the last seven days? Right. In the last, let's look at members for a start. More growth details. My computer has died. I'm always thankful for that. At least we're still recording. That's something. The computer can handle that. Anyway, come on, you can do it. seven days uh, engagement up people are posting commenting and reacting that's good uh, member details uh, Ryan Cornell has been pumping out some nice 3d pictures in the last few days thank you Aaron Freeman he's a, a new member uh, but he's um, a youtuber himself he's put he does his little uh, science optimism videos on a daily basis or five days a week and yeah, a lot of fun. I hope people are enjoying those. I'm happy to help him out with the, his little channel. The wee small guys need to stick together. Um, Floor Steeman, Rowan Pat Geary. Um, yeah, others have been uh, really uh, helping out. I help out more if you like, because that's what I'm all about. You know what I mean? So, let's try to get some details of growth the last seven days we've had the six members approved i've been declining a few members lately like as i mentioned in previous podcasts um it's just a bunch of people who are just hopping on for i, I don't know why because they're obviously just group a group uh group hoarders i guess i was almost going to say something nasty but uh group hoarders is a similar sounding word i guess <laughs> and um look if you don't if you're not serious about being part of this group I don't really want you here because um, yeah I'm trying to just have some fun with science and astrobiology so if you're not interested in um, contributing to that you just there to hang around and I'm, I don't want I don't care if the numbers get beefed up or not I'd rather there's people who want to be here are here so you know now to that end I've added a few people myself they're welcome to get lost if they want uh, but if you guys have friends who are into this stuff as well, and maybe um, they like to join, um, add them. They, it's up to them to walk away if they want. I'm, I'm cool. I'm, I'm a big boy. I can handle it. So, yeah. That's it. Now, let's see where we're at. So, we've done the introductions and whatnot. Welcome new members. That's uh, good to see you along. Um the astrobiological stuff this week. Um, I'm working. My next video is on the, the history of astrobiology in, in a sense. I was looking at um, the very, very uh, ancient roots of astrobiology, going back s several centuries. Maybe not ancient, but several centuries. But even though it's a, a fairly new science, it has uh, roots in other sciences and other philosophies going back five, six hundred years. So I'm just gonna. Do a little, uh, do a little tour of astrobiology through the ages in Europe, because uh, Europe's been pretty much the scientific centre of things for a while. Uh, other countries too, but I'm going to concentrate on Europe for this video. Um, 
I've got my information from the uh, European Space Agency's Bulletin 142, I think it was. Let's just check that. I don't know offhand. I apologise. I'll find it for you. Or I'm about to get. But anyway. Now, I've been reading up a lot about the astrobiology and its the various aspects of this uh, fascinating science. Some great articles have been going up. I've read some great articles. Um, I'm trying to share as much as I can. If you guys are following the group, you'll be seeing them. Now, in, now the posts. Some posts that I put up. Where are we? I'll make the group page. Bear with me. Okay, so it's just my little videos. Um, Earth analogs almost certainly in the tens of billions. Um, Prominent uh, researchers, you come to the conclusion that um, habitable planets may not be absolutely everywhere, but uh, there are, with the, the kind of numbers that exist in this galaxy alone, there's still tens of billions. So that leaves hope for us uh, astro nerds. That was an interesting post, that one. Uh, methane is a bioindicator. Now, research on our own planet is suggesting the presence of this compound in the atmospheres of exoplanets may be a significant indicator of the presence of life under certain conditions. I've got to add that uh, little caveat at the end. Because when you say something like uh, Earth-like or habitable, uh, people jump on that and get all shelled me about it. So I'm just saying it's Earth-like as in similar gravity, similar composition, um, within the habitable zone of its parent star. But you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be you know, a place where you can like, go to the beach. It may be um, a frozen hellhole. It could be a, a burning desert, but uh, it's if something can live there, it's considered Earth-like. So astrobiology looks for that. It doesn't look for ET or Martians or Vulcans or anything on like that. It looks for just anything. So that uh, kind of broadens the criteria a bit. Um, so yeah, biosignatures. Methane is a biosignature uh, because it's generally. Um, biogenic in origin not always I mean methane uh, there are seasonal fluctuations on Mars of methane they're, not, they're still not quite sure what's producing it it's most likely not life but um, still worth checking out and they are checking that out as we speak Maybe not as I speak but as we speak so moving on Lane Tail Saborn I was putting up lots of posts uh, lots of uh, um, journal articles which are a great read if you're into the heavier stuff. Uh, for instance, this one on the uh, impact of gas giant instabilities on habitable planets. Um, the gist of the article is thus, uh, in our solar system, for example, there are two gas giants, uh, Neptune and Uranus aren't gas giants, they're ice giants. We have two gas giants, and they've been helpful in the, um, the rise of life on Earth because they protected Earth from impacts from uh, planetesimals and asteroids due to their gravity. Um, they act like a net. Uh, keeping uh, intruders out of the solar system. But in other solar systems where there are uh, more than two gas giants, so things tend not to go as well for any planets that reside within the habitable zone of that the system's star. And a lot of modeling was done. A lot of modeling. I think 143 systems were modeled, and um, they came to the conclusion that uh, anything more than two gas giants in a solar system tends not to bode well for um, the existence of life there. Mind you, these are any models, and um, actual real life has a way of sort of throwing rules back in your face sometimes, but it was an interesting read, so thank you to Lane Tower for that one. Uh, Claude Doudna put up a little post. Uh, it runs as thus. Somebody put up a post that on April 20th, several planets will align and turn the moon green. Now, I have some really big doubts about this. Any enlightenment? Um, nobody said anything, but uh, hey, I don't know. People say all kinds of stuff. I don't think Claude believes it. I'm pretty sure of that. Ryan Cornell is putting his pictures up. Thank you, Ryan. He does this uh, 3D. He converts astronomical pictures into 3D models. And some of them look pretty good, so check them out. He's, he puts a lot up. He's just... A busy guy, obviously, just doing this all day long. Thank you, Ryan. Right. Yeah, 
it's my live stream that I did uh, a few days ago on put up on YouTube uh, with the, the transit method uh, now the, the test satellite uh, mentioned in one of those daily daily videos I mentioned before the transiting exoplanet survey satellite and obviously it's finding planets using the transit method and the transit method is basically is looking for um, the dimming in a star as something passes in front of it uh, which usually is a planet um, you may or may not have heard of Tabby Star, a star that uh, a lot of people are focusing on at the moment. Uh, it's, it's actually fluctuating in brightness, and they, they don't know why. But um, you know, a lot of theories are abounding about that. You know, alien megastructures and Dyson spheres and whatnot. Now, megastructures are a pretty cool idea for science fiction, but personally, I just can't see it happening. I mean, anything, if anything. I don't know. It, the, the materials needed to build, say, a, a sphere around a star, it's just ridiculous. Like, how much metal would you need for that for a start? And, like, I just can't, I just can't see it being needed for a start. Who could, who could need that much energy? I mean, I mean, you know, oh, who knows? I'll, you know, it's a matter of debate. Several groups of mine, the people have, lots and lots of opinions about things like that and um look, i don't think aliens like intelligent aliens don't exist um but i just tend to have a little bit of a problem believing in some of the more way out stuff like that i think that if they do exist they'll generally they won't look like us of course but they'll generally follow the same kind of path that we do um now i'm not sure how much further we'll progress but um if they're out there they probably either several hundred or thousand years behind us in development or you know a few centuries ahead um, hopefully they might have wised up and become advanced and peaceful and you know do the right thing but who knows I don't know we've got a way to go yet we have nowhere near that yet but anyway moving on that was a live stream go check it out I uh, did a lot of um, just random zipping around in Space Engine. I, I, I was using Space Engine to simulate um, planetary transits and stuff. The live stream was to teach or explain what the transit method is. It's very simple, really. If something passes in front of a star, the, the light in the star dims a little bit, and you can use that to infer the presence of a planet. And uh, the amount of light that is blocked out. Is an indicator of the uh, the size of this planet, and you can tell how fast the planet's orbiting around a star by the amount of time it takes to transit the star or cross the uh, the star. So fairly basic, I guess. There's a bit more to it than that, but that's it in a nutshell. Good old nutshell, eh? Okay. It's been like a lot of a lot of interesting stuff going on this week. I've been trying to um, keep track of it all. Articles about uh, proteins and their role in the, uh, the the rise of life. All kinds of stuff. It's just uh, all good, clean fun for the whole family. It's all fun and games until someone loses an eye. That's what they say. But uh, yep. Yeah. I hope you guys are enjoying yourself. That's all. That's all I'll say. Um, yes. Now I know there are a few Expanse fans. On the uh, in the group, I'm a big fan too. Still haven't managed to read those books yet. There's aren't a thousand of they at the moment. I'm working on the channel and these podcasts and videos and all sorts of stuff. But um, I'm just writing a note here. Got my dog in the room. You can probably hear in the background. Right, bear with me. I may put some music in these podcasts. It might be an idea just to break things up a bit. Um, yeah, I could do that. I could try that out. I'll put some songs in this one at random intervals. So, where are they going? I'm talking about the podcast, and I lost track of what I was talking about. That's okay, I'll get back to it. I'm currently looking to trying to learn how to build a model. I've never built a model before, but I want to build a model of an O'Neill cylinder. An O'Neill cylinder, in case anyone doesn't know, if 
the sort of megastructures um, stream. Uh, it's uh, a spinning tube. Uh, people live inside the tube and they basically have it the inner surface of the tube and it's creates gravity by spinning around. And these cylinders are a staple of science fiction and I think they're, they're a realistic option for um, a space habitat uh, in the future. You can know uh, there's a lot of space, um, there's gravity, um, a lot of room. You can uh, have farms and animals and cities. And all kinds of cool things in there. But I want, I'd like to build a model of one because I plan on doing a video based around the um, the megastructures live stream, the, the subject matter of that. Um, that was um, what would uh, future space explorers find living on a board an abandoned megastructure, in this case an O'Neill cylinder. If the, uh, the cylinder's inhabitants or intelligent inhabitants or builders perished or passed on or killed themselves off or Die from disease or whatever. Um, if if the cylinder is still, you know, hypothetically structurally functional and working for in whatever way, um, what if any animals or plants that were left behind are surviving and and what form are they taking and what kind of new ecosystems are flourishing and what which ones aren't? It's that's a really interesting question. I haven't really left that one alone. I've got to say been thinking about that a lot and I want I'd like to build a model of one of these things so I can make a video about it because I don't have expensive 3d modeling software and I don't and I definitely don't have like 20 years to learn how to use it because all those things just you know they, they always say steep learning curve and I just I'm not, I'm not doing that <laughs> I'm sorry I'll do things old school you know I was raised in the uh, era of George Lucas where you know the death star was made from matchboxes and lipstick tubes so that's fine by me I I'm sure, you know, the Godzilla, the Japanese stuff, it's all models, like, you know, people are all obsessed with CGI now, but practical effects still have their place, and um, I'm going to build this thing, I've decided. I was actually hunting around for bits the other day, or yesterday, sorry, and I've got a two litre soft drink bottle, but uh, maybe a little bit too small, I think I need something slightly bigger than that, uh, so, basically a, uh, a large tube thick tube about two feet long maybe maybe bigger I'm not sure preferably with some clear sections but you know if I can't have it well that's just bad luck but yeah that's what I'm doing I was thinking today about uh, how would you create a forest inside one of these things I was thinking like I could get some moss put it in there apply some sort of effect to it with my computer um, and make it look like a, a forest somehow I don't know but the, how the heck would you put a forest inside a model a realistic looking forest inside a model that's my project for the uh, for the time being I'm going to do a little series of videos about my progress on that as well I think I filmed the, uh, the, the bottle holding it up I'm going to edit that into a video about you know looking for materials and ideas and stuff um, it should be a lot of fun but uh, that video I'm gonna make that video I was even thinking about stories it's a great story idea too <laughs> I mean I work in a factory and part of the joy but part of the beauty of working in a factory is that uh, you do a lot of repetitive boring work and you get tons of time to think during the day so I think a lot about this stuff and other things but yeah the mega, the abandoned megastructures. I mean, even the, well, people. If people did survive, what a disaster to fell the inhabitants. If there was some survived, and say a, a nursery of children were all those left, and so they inherit this this world to themselves, and they grew up without rules and stuff. And what happens to them? What what do they become after, say, maybe they decades or centuries of, of living alone in this thing, and and generations of people and of and the civilization has arisen. What would it look like? It'd be the first truly new civilization in a long time because I was just thinking yesterday or the other day again. I do, like I said, I do a lot of thinking at work. That no, no new peoples or tribes or, or societies have arisen since. I guess I think in the 1960s, the last 
tribe of that Brit of people were discovered uh, here in Australia. I think likewise in Papua New Guinea as well. Some some a remote tribe was discovered in the I think in the 60s in the highlands of Papua New Guinea. And they're like the last the last people. There's now no one knew. Everyone everyone knows each other now. So there are no new societies evolving. There are no new races of people emerging. There's like human race stopped stopped expanding. It's now expanded so much that it's expanded into itself. No one's a stranger anymore. And this bunch of people living on this sphere, the descendants of these children or whatever, like they they'd be new. They'd be what 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 they what form would their culture take? I mean say the the cylinder was maintained by machines or or AIs or robots and they were still functioning. How would they how would they jive with the this new society would they become part of it or would they be worshipped would they would they I don't know so many ideas I'm going to find and write them all down as well but yeah I'm going to build this model and just take it from there um, I mentioned I was doing so on the, uh, the, the Slack group I'm part of the We Create EDU Slack group and got some positive reception there um as a YouTube sort of uh, community of science or educational YouTubers, but you know this is for a YouTube video, so I just put it out there that I was intending to work on this. Any uh, model builders out there with advice? I'm, uh, I'll be glad to hear it. Um, you know, the models I've made are those kit, you know, those kit models from when I was a kid. You know, war planes and things like that. I've done a few of those, plenty of those. Some Robotech models, kit models, but I've never really built anything. Uh, should be interesting. Should be a challenge. There's nothing like a challenge. But uh, yeah, those are my thoughts on that. What have I talked about so far? Uh, welcome, new members. Uh, I've spoken about the YouTube channel. It's going pretty well. It's getting 180 subscribers and 2,600 views, or just over. So thank you to anyone who's helping out there. Um, I'm definitely not Vsauce or PewDiePie, but uh, I am grateful for that it's growing. It's growing faster than it was before, so it's starting to head up. Slowly but surely. We'll get there if I keep working on it, which I am doing. Um, yeah, I've been busy um, working on other videos, these daily videos, which I hope you're enjoying. I hope they're uh, informing you as well. They're meant to be short. There's no, there's no speech. Just, um, just captions so you don't need to have sound on you can just uh, read it it's, it's basic information but it's meant to point you in a direction I'll, I'll provide a link in the the, uh, the post as well um, so yep you're welcome they will probably become a regular thing I hope so um, I haven't done these podcasts one of these podcasts a couple of weeks I've been really meaning to get back into it um, but yeah here I am talking to you again so if you've listened this far thank you um thank you for being part of the group um thank you for being part of this uh this little village that i'm trying to create um and last but not least i'm working on building a model of an o'neill cylinder which is a hypothetical space habitat spinning cylinder anybody who's watched babylon 5 knows what it is um probably it the astrobiology stuff has been interesting this week i'm not going to talk about any particular topic i've briefly described the transiting method of detecting exoplanets um i'll always put links up so if i don't uh, put a link up in the uh the, the post which contains this podcast uh forgive me oh you'll always find something so but yeah um this has been it's been great talking to you Hope to hear from you. Um, feel free to comment or suggest whatever you want. Um, I'm a big boy. You can be negative if you want, but just be constructive about it. Um, I'll speak to you guys soon. You'll see me on YouTube soon with uh, a, a history of astrobiology. Uh, it should be a week or two. Possibly slightly more, but uh, it'll be pretty soon. And 
after that is a video about Venus, colonizing Venus, which I've also been harking on about a little bit and also really want to do. So that's my next big project. This uh, Megastructures video I'm talking about, uh, it's going to be like a, a background project, I think. But uh, one that I'm, I'm keen on doing. Um, so, to that end, this is Ben saying goodbye again. This is Astrobiological bringing you the universe in plain human. And always remember, explore Astrobiological. Catch you later. Thank <laughs> you.